What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So I figured over the next month or so I was going to do a series on things you can do to speed up your SketchUp models. So we're going to focus on several different things that usually slow down your models and uh, it's something I get a lot of questions about so I figured we'd cover some of those concepts in depth. So if there's something you'd like to see me cover in depth let me know in the comments down below. Um, I will say if you're looking for more advanced modeling techniques as well as smart models modeling practices, make sure to check out the SketchUp Essentials course. We cover a lot of stuff about this in that course, about the right way to create a model so that things run fast and SketchUp does what you need it to do. So if that's something you're interested in, you can check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so there's a lot of different things you can do. Um, to make your SketchUp models faster. But I wanted to start off by talking about the simplest one and also probably one of the more important ones. And that's simply to reduce the amount of geometry that you model in your models. So a lot of this stuff just simply comes down to understanding the way that SketchUp creates objects. Because I think a lot of people don't necessarily understand that. So like for example, let's say that I have a couple different circles here. And let's take a look at those circles real quick. So you can see how around the edge, SketchUp creates this circle as a number of segments. Segments. And if you look up in your entity info, you can actually adjust the number of segments in that circle by adjusting the segments box. So you can see how as I do this, my circle gets smoother the more edges I have in here, but there's also more things that SketchUp has to render or show. Because when SketchUp does a face or when SketchUp creates a face, what it does is it basically takes a number of flat faces hides the geometry between them to make them look like curved faces. So if you look at the hidden geometry, so if you go up to view hidden geometry and you look at the geometry created in this cylinder, you can see how there's a bunch of individual faces in here. And then if, and this circle over here had 24 segments. If I push pull this one up, you'll note that this one has 48 segments. So when I push pull it up, you can see how this one has more individual faces in here because the circle that it came from had more edges. However, if I go into view hidden geometry and I turn my hidden geometry off, you'll notice that other than a little bit of a um, a little bit of a straight line right here, you can't really tell the difference between the two of these. But this is where managing the amount of geometry in your model becomes important because if I was to triple click on this, which would just select all the entities in this object, you can see how this one's made up of 194 entities, where if I tri triple click on this one, this one's made up of 98. So this one literally has twice the amount of geometry. And the reason that's important is that's just more stuff that SketchUp has to render. More stuff equals more processing time equals slower models. Like let's say for example, I was to create a sphere over here. And so on the one on the left, I will make this circle 48 segments. And the one on the right, I will leave this circle as 24 segments. And now if I use the follow me tool to extrude these to create a sphere, oops, on each one of these, you can see how these spheres pretty much look exactly the same when hidden geometry is turned off. But if you turn hidden geometry on, and then you look at this, you can see how every one of these faces in the sphere is there's basically twice as many in this one as there are in this one. So if I was to go in here and triple click, the sphere has 1700 entities. If I triple click on this one, it has 840. And so you can see how this would add up really quickly. And this is one of the reasons that people's models get really slow because they just do stuff like this over and over again and they don't really know that they're doing it. You know, another example would be if we were to draw a rectangle standing up along this circle and then we were to create a series of curves. If I go in and adjust every one of these segments so that they have 24 edges instead of 12, and then I use the follow me tool to lay these in a circle, now if I triple click on this object you can see there's 8500 entities in this one. 
there's only 4200 in this one. So you can see how your geometry adds up really quickly and if you remain aware of this then you can avoid creating a whole bunch of extra stuff that SketchUp has to render in here um, because there's just so many edges and you can see how they look identical when you turn that hidden geometry off. So another place where this becomes important is if you use an extension like round corner to round off your edges. So let's say I have a countertop. There's an option for round corners and I'll link to a tutorial on round corner down below. A lot of people use this extension to make their edges look more realistic. So let's say I was to round this edge off and let's say we wanted to offset that by an inch. You can see how what this does is this rounds this edge off and makes it look more realistic, which is great. But you know, this object has 86 entities in it, so it's not a ton, but you can see how there's a whole bunch of faces in here that make up this edge. So if you use something like the bevel function, which just comes in here and bevels the edge instead of creates a rounded curve, you can see how you get the exact same look, but without all the extra edges in here that make up a curve. So if you can do something like a single bevel, then you could get the same look without creating a lot of extra stuff for SketchUp to render. So this is a model I've downloaded from the 3D warehouse. This is the Mason Contemporane by SC Kristoff. And so this is a model, I've got some proxy components in here for my Enscape tutorial, but let's say for example that you were taking this house and you were creating a rendering based on this house. Well, if you look right here, if you look at the light fixtures for example in the house, or something in the background like maybe these handrails, so if you look at these handrails, if most of your views are going to be from way out here, you don't need a super high polygon edge um, or a super high polygon circle making up this handrail. So you don't need a 128 sided circle making up uh, these wires that are in here. You could realistically probably do this with an eight sided circle and nobody would ever see. And it would have like a third the number of geometry in there. So if you can just be aware of what shots you're trying to get, what images you're trying to create, and don't model everything in your model as super high polygon, then you'll find that your models get a lot faster and they're a lot easier to work with. So you can also use smart modeling techniques like putting the geometry heavy objects on their own layer and turning it off until you need it, or proxy components, which means you temporarily swap out high polygon objects. I'll link to that down below. There's different things you can do, but generally speaking, you always need to be thinking, how can I reduce or model with as few polygons as possible to get the result that I want? Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this series, about this video. I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.